Hi everybody, Brian Bulrick with Roland DGA Corporation in Irvine and I'm here today to do a short video uh, segment on the tiling function of our VersaWorks 6 RIP. So if you follow along, I've got uh, VersaWorks 6 loaded and running. I've got a simple uh, graphic here, it's just three motorcycles. So let's start by going over to the left hand column of activities and go all the way down until you see the clip and tile box so it's almost all the way down on the left we'll click on that and you can see this actually this graphic is only 36 by 23. Um, let's go ahead and make it bigger so i'll go back to the first uh, control box which allows us to change the scale and we're going to change that to 400 percent so let's pretend that we're blowing this up to be printed on a on a big wall for a company. So now we go back down into uh, tiling and now you can actually see that with the material that we have loaded which comes in at 52.13 inches in usable width when it's loaded. So that is our absolute max pixel to pixel width that we can achieve on that roll where the pinch wheels are currently set. Um, we are separating it in some not great places you can see this first tile at 52.13 because that's the default it'll just show you how much it can fit of this graphic on each panel maxed out so there's your first panel your second panel your third panel well it's kind of getting close we've got our three motorcycles but let's go ahead and manually drag so that's one of the nice features is we can just hover our mouse over any part of this blue vertical line we're going to grab it and we're going to just simply drag it if we can there we go right into the center of the split between the green motorcycle and the yellow motorcycle and as you'd expect we're going to take this further one uh, towards the red motorcycle and we're going to click and drag it to the center of the next split so these are perfectly logical split points mainly because there's no art occurring in these areas it's just a black line um, just happens to be that this art has these separation uh, frames with black. So the beautiful part of that is the joining of the two is going to look perfect because you're going to have just black on black and there's no patterns to intersect. And for example, you know, just to give you the, the worst case scenario is you're going to split this graphic, let's say, uh, let's see, anywhere in the graphics fine. So in this case you can see we're coming through the rear view mirror that's an outbound black up top you carry down we just got a field of green that should be fine and then we get into the uh, headlight of the motorcycle and that's a different shade of blue moving to white we've got some uh, patterns starting to show up you move further down the line you can see there's a reflector further down so the trick is that when we go to let's say mount this to a wall the installer has got to be sharp enough to hopefully have an airy grass vinyl that allows him to lightly tack the vinyl up and he's going to carefully visually match the two and, and do what's called a book match so visually book matching simply means he's artistically getting that second panel perfectly aligned without stretching it it's another art to uh, wrapping objects walls cars He's going to get that tacked perfectly and he's going to make it so that it looks seamless. Uh, there's just a perfect continuation. You would never know that there was a separation there. That's the beauty of tiling if it's done right. Well, even better when you can take your split point, click and drag it, and it's moving into an area where there's literally no change. It's just one color and you're splitting it right down the center. So nice tip. Just keep that in mind that you have full control over that. Um, if you're lucky you know in some cases um, let's say that the in initial graphic the green motorcycle was 60 inches wide well unless you're willing to change to a bigger machine and get a wider roll you're never going to reach that on a 54 inch media or printer so you're gonna have to tile it you're literally going to have to pick one of these trickier spots to do the split it's just no way around it so that being said, let's carry on and take a look here. We've got manual tiling set up for just a simple single row because we're just going to, the, the one panel is going to be just fine. It hits, hits the mark as far as our height requirement. And then there's going to be these three separate tiles. Alternatively, we can click on tile size. 
I just have arbitrarily put in here a 30 by 30 and you can see with that set we've got quite a number of them. Oh, something I didn't mention before and I just want to mention real quick. Let's go back to number of tiles and then back to manual tiling. Um, let's see. I will put out the first tile here. And you can see that this is more of clipping. So I'm just clipping the whole, whole artwork down to one object. So I'll, keep, I'll take it back to the number of tiles and we'll drag that back out again. So let's go back to the original art. And you can see that our original panel is still there. It's that one massive panel. So if we go back again to clipping and tiling, there we can see our split points taking into account the roll again. So um, wanted to mention, so let's go ahead and click and drag this panel again back to where we had it, right in that black line for both of these, right? Now, before we go any further, if I go out and I say I'm done, this is how I want it done. So we click back to our design layout and I zoom way out. You're going to see all three panels just nicely arranged and they're actually ready for print. All three of those will release and you'll have all three of them on a big roll ready to be laminated and then cut down and transferred. But let's say that for this particular job, the client changed his mind. He's going to do a different wall. It's a lot shorter. Uh, he can't actually fit all three, so he only wants you to print uh, one or two of them. Well, that's even easier. So while you've got this open, you just right click on any one of these panels and it deactivates the panel. Uh, side note, you must have at least one tile active. Obviously, <laughs> it's going to confuse the rip if you just magically say, I've got a print job, but there's nothing to print in it. So, uh, there it is. Uh, right click brings the, the panels back online again. You can mix and match however you want to do this. Just pick your panel for print and you're ready to go. So I'll turn these all back on again. Uh, we can change this to numbers of tiles. Let's say we want two and two. So there you go. Uh, that's a split of a different type. So now we're running them wider and longer than we are taller and skinnier. Um, I'll go back to manual tiling or we'll try and actually clear this back to one and one. So then it's just going to say, oh, okay, you're back to your, your, your selection. And then we'll do a single horizontal. And we'll do two vertical, or we'll do, let's see, two horizontal, one vertical. There we go. And we'll move that up to three, back to where we had it before. So you get the idea. We're kind of in full control. We'll go back to manual tiling again, and we can start playing around with these lines again. So a lot of different options here. Uh, so again, they're all right through here. This is your tiling control panel. Now, place alternative or place alternated. Um, let me explain how that works. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to split this up into a bunch of 30 by 30 panels. OK, so if you leave that unchecked. When our printer goes to print, let's look at this from left to right like we read a book. So the top left where the Roland logo is, that's panel one. The one to the right of it is panel two and they go from, you know, they're continuing. But look, when you go to print this, so there's the first panel, right? And you can see that the front of the printer is always at the very top of the screen. Okay, so that's you looking at the front of the printer. So that means that the Roland bars of the Roland logo is closest to your right. I know it's reversed as we're looking at this, but you just have to think about that. So that's where the Roland logo's starting, is closer to the right side of the machine and not much happening over to the far left. As a matter of fact, there's some empty space. But then we move down. Uh, before I leave that, though, you can see the, hand, the grip of the motorcycle is to the more towards the left side of the printer. But when we go to print that second panel, the first thing that occurs is actually the continuation of the grip, which happened to the far left of the printer. But now we're starting to print it to the right side of the printer. So if we change this setting to place alternated and we go back. Now what should happen when we go through this print is the print with the handlebar comes out first and then the print with the handlebar continuation should actually occur reversed. The reason for that. What we're trying to achieve here is getting 
an absolute match to the um, uniqueness of everyone's printer. So let's pretend for a minute that perhaps on your machine at your shop, the section of printing that occurs over to the left side of the machine, maybe the heaters fluctuate ever so slightly. So the amount of heat being generated in that zone of the printer is a slightly different temperature than it is on to the far right of the printer. Well, what we're trying to achieve is perfection. So if, we're, if we started printing the Roman logo to this side, why not print it again on the same side, trying to book match it perfectly, both in color, quality, consistency. So the way that we were attempting to achieve that is this control here, place alternated. So that's all that means is that per panel, we're doing our best automatically to take objects and if they started printing on one side or the other of the printer we're trying to make it so that they're printing on the same side the same location on the printer trying to maintain consistency from panel to panel to panel to panel hopefully that makes sense you can play with it do a little experimentation my recommendation they show it in the manual actually as a big capital letter a and you're splitting the a in half well if you split the letter a in half what the printer naturally wants to do with that unchecked is continue the print from where it left off but if you use that checkbox it flips it around and as you'd expect let's say the serif of the font is printing on the exact same side as it did when it originally printed the first half of the character so hopefully that makes sense um let's go ahead and talk a little bit about let's see here i'm going to do this back to the three panels we'll click on manual and we'll drag this back a little bit so it's centered and Drag this one out a little bit so it's centered. And now we'll go down to overlap. So this is pretty simple. Uh, when you go to book match these panels, it's very customary in wrapping to take some amount that we're going to define here, a quarter inch, a half inch, a full inch, whatever your preference is for the installer. You may want to ask your installer always what he prefers. Some want a lot, some don't need a lot, they'll tell you. So uh, your overlap is simply that it's you're going to end up with again the perfect amount of material to work with so that when they do book match together there's not more of one side than the other they're going to mate right but you're going to have them overlapped ever so slightly. So that amount which I have here set for a half inch that means it'll produce a mm, extra half inch of that print so that when they are brought together there is a half inch where they are overlapping so basically it's creating clone data so that they'll be able to do that so that's your type of overlap is the top left so that very simply means it's only going to produce that overlap where it needs it starting at the top left all right your options are also to print the overlap lines that becomes useful uh, let's see if I can get them to show there we go you have to I have to drag the line out into an area where you can see so now that I've done that I can drag this further out and show you well here we go so print overlap so now you can see where that split point is where the the blue line is you're gonna see these dotted lines to left and right and you can change the color of that we're literally asking it to give us a visual it'll print those little tiny dotted lines onto your graphic so that they're used as a reference to um, to make it easier for the installer to find those those magic lines that he needs uh, in our case I, i'll be honest most of the installers that we use they don't prefer that they'd rather it be uh, just the graphic itself and then just being told we've included a, a half inch overlap and then they know it's a half inch that they need to carry over and to be honest they're using their eyes uh, to make those judgments anyhow there's some times where maybe the type of graphic maybe the patterning in the object is so difficult to visually reference they may ask for it and if they do you do have options they might say can you please produce a color that is a specific color for those printed dots so they're not too apparent maybe you want to mask them or make them disappear a bit so you want a very light amount of a certain color so in this case I've only used a five percent black it'll be a very very uh light uh you know line that you'll see there very uh, almost imperceptible but for enough for him to use him or her 
So there you go on that. Um, last but not least, all corners, very simply, and it keeps resetting, but you just drag them back to where you want them, if you can. There we go. Remember, you have to actually hover over the correct line, otherwise it won't drag. You see, you literally write one next to the other. One is the visual, and one is the actual drag line. So you have to be careful of where your mouse is sitting before you click. All corners simply means, again, if we were to do multiple tiles, so let's go to 30 by 30 tiles. Obviously, the left and right tiles, that's going to be a simple top left corner because there's only one section that's going to ever overlap. But if you have multiple, like where it's top and bottom, left and right panels that are going to intersect and you want overlap top and left and right, you simply do all corners. And you now have overlaps on every panel that needs it. It's that simple. I hope this has been helpful. As always, if you have any questions, you'd be free to ask them, and we will get back to you either with a video or on our blog posts. I uh, hope to see you in another video in the future. Bye.